Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream Park on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. It is grade three Princess Rooney day. Two stakes races on the card, but of course headline the grade three Princess Rooney. A win in your in to the Breeders' Cup. Mayor, Philly and Mayor Sprint. Philly and Mayor Sprint out at our sister track at Santa Anita yeah. this year. So exciting to see. We'll see Mary Quake and Cherry back in that race. Graded stakes here, and it's kind of a cool precursor to the championship meet, which is not that far away. Yeah, it's getting here very close. And also, mandatory Rainbow Six Day. Yeah, so wow, big doings yesterday. Golf clap to somebody, and we'll show yeah. uh, the payout here. Somebody swept this thing yesterday. They... 213992 after all was said and done and uh it was not easy no. and uh i was on the radio this morning talking about it and d regresso who won it there was the other horse in there jose d'angelo that we kind of thought was the one that would, might win it if if it was going to be swept yeah. and lo and behold d regresso just there was really never an anxious moment no the horse took the lead a second time starter for antonio sano no. and uh that was it. Mm, yep, that was it. It was gone goodbye. But uh, still, it'll be a very large pool yeah. today. We'll both have tickets for you. It's still a mandatory yep. pool today. So it will be paid out today regardless. Obviously, the, the buzz is off a little bit. Mm -hmm. But it will still be a solid pool that must go today. Yep, it's a very exciting day. We'll hopefully have a winning rainbow ticket for you. But to kick things off, early pick five. <laughs> Yeah, I had this at $90 when I sent it over and was <laughs> hoping for a scratch or two or at least to kind of help me out a little bit. Nothing happened. So I whittled it down to 30. We, we'll take a look at it now. Uh, we'll get to the opener in a second. So what I did was I had 168 in race two, but I do like Ember. That was always my top pick. So what I did was shaved it down to a third at $30 in race number three, the five, the myth for me, for Team Cassie, race number four, the six, and that is self-taught for Sandino Hernandez. Good to see him back in the entry box here at Gulfstream Park and then we'll just throw something at the wall here in race five. Very interested to hear what you have to say about race five uh, with a lot of first time starters, a lot of you know works to analyze. But I went with the five XY face and I'll tell you why in a little bit. I think it's an interesting race and we'll just have to see well, what's behind us, actually, when they come out here? Yeah, it's a very good card just in general today, but some good maidens early on. Now, race one, a $16,000 maiden event for two-year-olds, a mile and 70 yards on the Tapita track. It's a clean race, but just note the two is uh, gelded. So just note that he was listed as a colt. He is gelded. Uh, Outside for you, my great illusion and Victor Barboza. Yeah, I mean, I don't love losing at 9 to 10. Last time, right. um, I, I, you know, you look at the rest of this field. He already beat one of the main players in here, and that's awesome. Friend did it pretty convincingly, right. too. And, you know, it's one of those things where that's the best race here. It is. Both of his last two races are the best race It here. is. And I think uh, I, I try to get creative. We just have our exactos reversed here. But Decisive Warrior... I thought this horse ran very well going two turns on the Tapita for the first time. Yeah, and he stumbled really badly at the start, too. So maybe with a little more alert beginning, that gap from, you know, from the top pick in, in your second place, maybe that exacta does get reversed. And as you could see in my ticket, I did use him because I think – of anyone in this field, he's the horse with the biggest amount of upside. Yeah, and the six awesome friend, uh, he just is what he is at this point. The blinkers yeah. come off. They put him on last time. Didn't quite work. Uh, Hector Diaz Jr. stays aboard. At least he did show a little more interest early on last time. He did. He got the surface switch. He got the two turns, and he did show more interest last time. I think the problem with him is now maybe the blinkers settle him a little bit, but yeah. he's got the favorite and the horse to beat to his outside, and that's just never a good set of circumstances. It's tough. Race number two starts the early pick four claiming eight thousand dollar level mile and 70 yards i've got the early pick four duty so we'll go ahead and take a look it's a six dollar ticket for me i'm singling right off the bat this is uh, my best bet of the day race three the seven on top for me that is brizero for Safi joseph race four the six on top for me that is self-taught and in race number five the eight on top for me catalytic i like this horse a lot today it's a six dollar play and this race here, we've got a replay of Ember, and uh, I'll let you you take it away. Is he your top pick? He is, okay. and he's my single. There, there's not a ton going on here, but this horse was absolutely wide, wider, and widest literally every step of the way. And he's just a month and a half the best here. Yes, he rises out of the 2L 
ranks, but I, I thought this was, I know he, he won off by two and a quarter, and, and to me, he was even like much, much better than that. The waters get a little deeper. Mm -hmm. I, I get it, but there's just, you're not supposed to be scared of anyone in no. here. He comes in off a win, and now he really, to me, comes in off two straight wins because I think it's obvious, A, he was in over his head two back, B, he was sprinting two back. Exactly. He, he wants nothing to do with a tapita sprint, and, and he's just kind of a long-legged galloper. I think he's in a good spot right back here, so that's that's kind of how I played it. I think that's – you can't knock him much at all here, and this is a barn that's been firing on all cylinders. Now the two Grand Soiree, this is my best bet of the day. First off, the claim for Carlos David. That's yeah. a super dangerous ang angle. And uh, the, the owner of the horse, uh, Jason Gracia, that's actually Carlos David's uh, uncle. Okay. Uh, cousin, uncle. I am, I know they're related. So I just think – and he gallops for him, too. Mm -hmm. He galloped does uh, Zinden. Uh, okay. Zandon, Zandon? Uh, who won the Breeders, I mean, the uh, Dubai Golden Shima. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, so anyway, my point with this being is that they're keeping it all in the family here. This is a barn that it's kind of interesting they would jump in for a horse like this. Uh, sometimes Carlos David uh, does claim these kind of lower level horses and he does really well with them. You go against Carlos right now at your own uh, risk. Right. Because he is white hot. Everywhere. Uh, yeah, no kidding. And you've got oh, old Keanu back in your, your try here. He's fine. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense in here, but he's, he's going to like this group better than the 20 he was in last time, that's for sure. Race number three, a maiden special weight event. It is for state breads here for Phillies, two years old. We're going to go five furlongs on the Tapita track here. It's a clean race of eight. And let's start off the replay, mm -hmm. the the talking points with great Venezuela because you're against this horse. Yeah, I'm against this horse. I, th this was, uh, I had the winner last time and, and ran very, very well for Mary Leitner, but great Venezuela to me had the entire length of the stretch to go by and, and I don't like the H word, but she did not want to go by. And this was, now this was a fast race for the level. I will, if, if you believe it. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, she's, got to win here. She doesn't. This was 25 maiden claimer. So it's a confident move that Victor moves her to state bread maiden special weight. I, this just kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Yeah, you are supposed to go by at that point. And you say it's a quick race for the level. I remember the rain we got prior yeah. to that. You were we doing. To, I did it in the tunnel. Yeah, in the tunnel, call. and and that made a big difference. I think changing the the quickness of the tapita just yeah. up a notch. But ye, theoretically, you're supposed to go by a horse like that. Uh, your top pick, the myth, Gary Barber, DJ Stable, Mark Cassie, coming to the Tapita for the first time. I mean, it's a it's a little bit of a stab, but I did think this horse woke up last time yeah. sprinting at Colonial. Those are good turf races. They are. At Colonial, especially the maiden special weight races. Maybe the claimers are a little watered down. The turf maiden special weight races there are really good, and this horse woke up with a distant second. So maybe the fresh new face for a barn. The Cassie barn is running, too. They are, and I think this is a filly that will enjoy the tapita quite fine. And now the seven, Brizero, first-time starter for Safi Joseph, Edgar Zayas. This is the first full, the damn one cheap. Right. Solid works, and I like that they've been keeping this filly on the tapita. And these offspring of Bucheros yeah. have just, oof, they're taking off you on like the tapita. Yep. Yeah, Dam took five full, five starts to break her maiden, mm -hmm. like Samantha kind of hinted at. She wasn't much. Um, I, I think Safi was, well, should we say, cautiously optimistic when we talked to him? Yeah, I, day, I right? would say that that's see we get fair. That. Yeah, we'll see. I, I like the post here. It's always a good spot to be, and uh, as far as the rest of the field goes, you have casually in the mix – don't really know what to get with her. No, but don't really want to put her any higher than fourth either because yeah. uh, the chances are adding up, and they're they adding up at, at short odds too. So I think horses like Casually that are going to come out here and run the same exact race every time, they're always – at the risk or mercy of somebody else jumping up and yep. running a big race, they're not going to be able to handle it. Race number four, claiming $25,000 level to the $20,000 level. It's seven furlongs on the main track for three-year-olds or four and up, which have never won three races. Uh, this is a field of seven here, and both of us on the six self-taught. Sindino Hernandez is uh, bringing horses back yeah. after... Uh, 
Actually, he did o okay won at Del Mar. Right? Won a couple at Del Mar, claimed a couple, and this is one of the aforementioned claimers. Yeah, I, it's not surprising that we land on the, the same horse here. Um, yeah. Now, if this horse has no speed whatsoever, that could be a little bit of a problem. I think there's enough pace in here. Yeah. Um, at the risk of speaking for you, I, I just didn't want to pick any of these horses in here. Quite yeah. honestly, Hercules, uh, you know, where, what we'll see what we get from him today. But he did not look good last time. No, he didn't. Now, first off, the claim, though, right. that's a huge, huge angle. Yeah. And he doesn't face uh, horses like Proverb no. in here, uh, which you got to meet your old you buddy. got to see him yeah. the other day, yeah. <laughs> uh, For Sappy Joseph. So I, I agree, complete. Now, I think the two, though, you, we talk about a pace in this race and a the fact that the six does not have any. The road to stardom, the two for Kelly Brain, this horse could just sneak away. If he gets loose, uh, he's very, very dangerous. There's yeah. no doubt about that. What we do know is he's not going to have to go 45-3 and three like he nope. did at Monmouth last time. If he gets loose, he's scary. I honestly had him initially. I picked him on top. Then I looked a little bit more, and I think there's other horses. If not if not run with him, keep him honest. And I think Hercules is one of them because who's on Hercules now? Hyro's on Hercules, too, is outside. I don't think yep. Amicio will let him get away. I don't think so either. I will be back in just a quick minute. We've got the mandatory Rainbow Six coming on up. Don't go away. And uh, they're off. My racehorse has opened up a door for people that felt like that door would have never been opened for them. We can all be owners and we can all get that excitement. You can meet your horse through the different experiences and all of the events that My Racehorse puts together. You get that hands-on connection. Whether you have $50 or $500, everyone that joins My Racehorse gets that experience of a lifetime. I love My Racehorse. Let's go. Welcome back to Goldstream today. Samantha Perry and Brian Natto with you, taking you through this extremely solid card. It's grade three, Princess Rooney Day, a win, and you're into the Breeders' Cup, a filly and mare sprint. It's mand mandatory Rainbow Six, and that's what we've got coming up, Brian. Yeah, we've got a couple tickets. We'll go ladies first. We'll show Samantha's right. first. I think still, you know, we're not going to have the, the pool we hope for. That's obvious. I think it'll still be a very, very healthy pool. We've got the same amount of tick on our ticket. Oh, how about Ooh. that? Twins. Uh, this race we'll get to in just a second. The sixth race, this is the spread for me. Uh, I do have the number nine on top pound green. Race seven, just too deep. The six on top for me, Japard. Uh, very speedy, but I also added in Loyal Louie. Race number eight of First stake race of the day, Miss Gracie, uh, the two time passage on top for me. But I spread a little bit. I was either going to just go straight down with time passage. I decided to just go a little bit further. My uh, top pick in the feature, the Princess Rooney, is Bluefield. And in the finale, uh, on my pick five, I subtracted a horse, but I added one here. Um, Umbral for me on top. I like it. $64. We'll run mine now as well, and it's uh, the same. I had to rework things. Unfortunately, last week, I opted to stay in Kentucky. I, she was my best bet, and the Rooney will spread here in race number six. Uh, the four Cupid's Dude on top for me. Race number seven, the eight on top for me. Loyal Louie, Kent Sweezy, another barn. Very, very hot. I saw the Miss Gracie as a two-horse race, and I like Coco in there. Uh, Mary Quake and Cherry, I scratch into her, but I'll tell you what, Bluefield's going to be tough, and... Um, Umbro is going to be, a, I would think, a huge favorite in, in race 10, nowhere near 10 to 1. Uh, but Church Girl, my, the 7, is my long shot. Getting back to Tapita today, okay. where she started in a maiden special way. So she's my stabber in there, and it's a weak race. With, to me, there's only one other horse, and that's the 10 Umbro. It's a very, very, yeah, the Umbro is going to be tough here, and I feel like probably a lot of people are going to be going down with <clears> that horse specifically. Now, this is a very, very good race to kick things off in the Rainbow Six. Uh, also a good opportunity to take a look at him beforehand yeah. because this is a maiden special weight event, six and a half furlongs on the fast main track. We scratch the two Dixie Preach out of here, and uh, your top pick in this spot 
XY face, okay. a little bit of a stab. It's as much maybe this colt is okay and the rest might maybe not be today they're okay. Big pedigree here. So they only paid, I say only, but they paid 52 for this twirling candy colt who's, you know, the dam was a grade three winner for yes. Bob Baffert. Uh, this is a, akin to two time, two graded stakes winners. Okay, law abiding citizen uh, and another one. So, you know, Two of them won on debut, too. Maybe yeah. we get something here today. And we maybe in Miguel's name. Yeah, I think that's a good sign. And this owners, these owners, they've been striking. They had mm -hmm. secret chat. Good call. Uh, so this is, uh, they, they've got them ready now. Kind of similarly to secret chat. This horse doesn't have a lot of work showing. Yeah. That that was my biggest sure. drawback. I, I got to believe that, you know. There's, there's more to it than this. I, exactly. Yeah, there's got to be. Right. I kind of prefer to have a, a work over the, the Gulfstream yeah. Park track. But on the other end of that, Palm Meadows, the training center, sometimes that can be a little bit of a, of a deeper track. Get some fitness out Exactly. Of yeah. So the 48 flat from the gate, that's a good work on paper, at least. Now the 8 catalytic, this is my top pick. Safi Joseph trains. Uh, son of Catalina Cruiser. This is a lot of money for a son of the Catalina Cruiser. It's a lot of money for a horse with, to me, had nothing on the page right. at all. The dam was 0 for 3. It was yep. her fourth fall. None of them really could, could run much. None of them won on debut, so they spend a pretty penny on this horse. I would think when you see this horse behind us, and we saw this horse at the barn the other day, yeah. it's going to look pretty good. I think so, too. The works on paper look good. One yeah. of the uh, owners uh, in this group here julie davies i love the horses that she uh, sells at the sales she just does a very good mm -hmm. job with them and i feel like they come in quite honest and uh, i i know maybe some people will be a little hesitant with kevin krieger aboard but i don't i mean this is a, a rider he won on golden since Absolutely. Yeah. Kevin uh, Kevin knows what he's doing he and uh, rode in the Kentucky Derby. And Tammy Bobo is a co-owner co here as well. We know th the success that she's had. Yeah. Um, you know, you would think the money should show on Catalytic today. The 11 Secret Lover. No. He, it, it's hard to make this horse because it's not like the stake race. He really did a lot of running. I, I mean, this is an easier spot, of course. It's a maiden race. It's a, it's an open maiden race that's true now, he's running three straight florida bread right. races um the blinkers didn't help him last time they didn't sharpen him up now ben tornado is is freakishly fast we exactly, get that yeah um he's not supposed to be favored in here i mean i would think catalytic is supposed to be favored I, i'm not going to not use a horse like this right. to kick off the rainbow the experience edge this is those two maiden special weights against they're, they're not scaring anybody in here yeah you don't have white series in the mix but i just want to show the work briefly i got them i do have them on my rainbow though okay the last one okay yeah. so uh so i want to show this because i, I didn't use this horse I wanted to show this work. Uh, this is th the good magic's prices have gone up here. Um, I think with the success of Mage, this horse has got a long stride, not the quickest here, but uh, I wanted to show this because I think that people will bet this horse just due to Victor Barboza. Again, this horse has got a really long stride. I think he's going to need more ground. Misael Jaramillo jumps aboard. I think that says we're going to try to get as much speed out of him as we can. Yeah, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And he should be uh, forwardly placed. He got the three for Delgado. Supreme yep. dominance. They paid over a quarter of a million for. So there's another horse that, that could potentially be live in here. Yeah. There's a lot going on in race five. And it's a good thing we start the rainbow here. Yes, thank goodness. Because this is a good one to just take a look at him. And, of course, we'll help you out beforehand. Now, race number six, a mile and a 16th. It's a claiming $10,000 level. Uh, we scratched the three Timmy M. I've got the late pick five. I just subtracted a couple of horses out for that, and, and I can tweet it out. Yeah. Uh, it's a $48 play. Uh, just a couple things I, I switched around a little bit. But uh, this race here, a mile and a 16th, we scratched the three Timmy M. I feel like this is a race where we could be all over the place. Yep. yep. And yeah. we are uh, Cupid's Dude on top for you. Yeah, it's a little tricky spot, but we'll, I think what we know now is Ray Giannis is backfiring a little bit, yeah. and we knew it was. It was it was sooner rather than later. And uh, Cupid's Dude ran pretty good last time for 10, and he's got a, the right kind of running style. Uh, and I, I just kind of feel like he's in a good spot here today. And this is a very untrustworthy field. That's very well said. Right? Yeah, I, I put the nine on top, pound green. I almost wanted to make this horse a, a long shot, but I'm, I'm glad I didn't at nine to two on the line. Uh, coming out of a race where he didn't do a lot of running, but I feel like this is a horse that is going to cycle back. You don't have him. But uh, yeah. 
I, I like the draw. He's out wide. He got beat up last time by two of them in here. But you're right. These are these are races where whose turn is it today? Exactly. The five X Y time. Wow, what a killer he faced last time. Fly the W yeah. would be one to nine in here. Yeah, you just draw a line through that race and you focus on his earlier body They're of work. Good. Jose Garofalo ran him in a really tough spot last time. Yeah. I think he's with his friends today. Yeah, most definitely. Now race number seven. It's allowance optional claiming five and a half furlongs on the Tapita track. It starts the late pick four. We can just go ahead. Yep, yeah. okay. We'll so it up. let's just uh, dig into this here. Now, this is a race where uh, I think it, I think Japard is going to get loose in here. You you Fast. opted with the eight, Loyal Louie, and you found a stat also on Kent Sweezy. Yeah, Kent's pretty, pretty hot to start the meet here. Good to see him back here at Gulfstream Park, and this is a pretty good stat for him. Nothing, like, major, but it just kind of dumbs it down into this level here, just to Pete sprinting for Kent in the past year, too. And I, I like to do the year on the Tapita because I feel like everybody's gotten a better fit for it, and Kent's certainly That's close fair, to yeah. the top of the list, you know, 21%. So this is actually what we're doing today. So 235 ROI. He's come back firing, Kent Sweets. He has he after. Really has. He's left a few horses here over the summertime and then took a big string up to Mammoth. Yeah. now. Uh, the seven executive search, I don't. I put a line through him. You're really going to have to talk me on him. That's exactly what I did, too. And I'm just hoping somebody keeps Gephardt honest. That's all. If he does get yeah. loose, he might come back. Um, Jairo, Amicio's on this horse, too. He'll get a little speed out of him as well. And I thought that race two back was okay. Yeah. Jepard just looks like he... There's nobody as fast as him in right. this spot here. I get it. It's hard to wire five and a half furlongs on the Tapita, but... Again, no one's as fast as him. Capture the Lion ran okay yesterday. He did. Yeah. He did. That was a funky four-horse field last time, That's too. And so, good, good you know, point. bigger group today. We'll see what we get from Yeah. Him. Race number eight, uh, one of the co-features, Miss Gracie. It is for three-year-old fillies, a mile and 70 yards. Uh, we scratch the three. Don't get pickled. It leaves a field of seven. And Coco for you. Yeah, Coco's good, right? Let's take a look at how good Coco is. She comes in here and absolutely yeah. phenomenal form and mm -hmm. she just blasted a group last time and she, and she absolutely won for fun too i mean the waters are deeper here time passage is in here but we're going to talk about this in a second but this is the old uh, absolutely name the score for coco and the score was seven so um i, I just think today she's in the good spot and i'm going to tell you why in a second because um there are no free passes on the lead today for time passage I agree. There's right. not. Not at all. And Coco was just so impressive here. You can't take anything away from her at all. She's just been in raging form. Mm -hmm. But you look at her form in her last five races. It's win one, second, win one, second, win one. Where's she sitting now? She's sitting outside of time passage. Well, okay. That's good. Not where I was going with that. But. I get it. Okay. Well, the loss was by a neck, by the way. She's, three, she's a neck away from that, three in a row. That's, that's fair. So time passage. This is a horse that she's been knocking heads with some tough three-year-olds and up lately. Two wins in a row. What, I, I, I get it. I, I know she's not going to have an easy lead. She's going to have Olga with her. But time passage, I don't think she needs the lead. No, I don't think she does either. But I think it's also been pretty clear her best two races are when she's found herself on the lead. Now, the race two back, she fell on the lead. Right. She worked for it last time. She was really, really good last time. Yeah. Who's uh, Coco's barn mate? Is uh, old Olga in there? I think it's a little, uh, uh, yeah, that's little, fair. Game, little gamesmanship in here. Yeah, that's they that's. We're not uh, letting you walk today. On the lead. Yeah, I, I feel like that's fair. And the six Pocky gonna try back to the Tapita yeah. for her. I, I think that she's. This is a much needed kind of relief, but it's still not an easy spot. No, I think you would admit she's a. We have four two two four, and then the gap. The rest, yeah, is a big one. Yeah, and who knows? Maybe somebody could jump up and yeah. surprise us. Now the feature, the Grade Three Princess Rooney, a win in your end to the Breeders' Cup filly and mare sprint, seven furlongs on the main track. We do scratch the six last leaf. Yeah, your top pick came out bet. of that, and your best bet. That's a it's a shame there. And uh, let's show the replay. Yeah, this is Bluefield yeah. Poema and our Adios. Jersey, and this was um, back in May 28th. And I got to be honest with you, this is what you're going to see today because definitely, our Adi I'm not saying Bluefield's going to win by the length of the stretch uh, or going to win, excuse me, but you're going to see Poema and our Adios Jersey do this right. for at least five, maybe six furlongs 
That's not helping either of them. Poema actually wins the battle here. Yeah. This is before I think our Adios jersey cycled back to her form. But here's Bluefield absolutely just, you know, biding her time and picking these horses off. And this, there's a legitimate chance this is exactly how it, watch her level out in the lane here, exactly how it plays out today. Yeah, she's a nice, nice mare. She's seven years old, and it seems like she's just really come into herself now. Yeah. You look at the race at Prairie Meadows. She was defeated by Uguri, who came back to win with an 89 buyer, a zero on the thoroughgraphs, if you're a, a reader of that. I, I love her today at Keeneland, yeah, Uguri. She's gonna, she's gonna I, I think she should win yeah. at, at Keeneland, and... The rail at Prairie Meadows that day was a golden Always. rail. Golden, yeah, you watch a lot of replays up there. And, and she was to the outside. So I just think that uh, this is a, a mare. She's coming into this race just right at the peak of her game. Uh, I couldn't agree more. And the other good thing for you is, too, she's, let's talk about Mary now. She's a much better price than Mary, quite contrary. Right. Uh, you know, there's a decent chance Mary went up to Saratoga and, and A, didn't like the surface. B didn't like Echo Zulu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, now she's back home. She's six for seven here at Gulfstream Park. The other good thing for your top pick, and it was why I was I was all last leaf today. Uh, Bluefield's going to get the jump on Mary Quite Contrary. Yeah, no doubt about that. Yep, and Mary Quite Contrary's drawn close to the rail, which could maybe. I, I mean, she's going to. She's. You'll see her late. This yeah. is her move. I respect her. I think that she could win this race. Echo Zulu, imagine what she would do to this field. Yeah. It would be scary. So I think she's deserving in this spot. I just wonder, has she gotten her heart broke now, yeah. uh, especially in that last race? It really, it didn't, it, her two back race looked like she showed some grit. And then the last one, it was kind of like, what are you doing, guys? I didn't like either of her races. Yeah. I thought she, I know. Echo Zulu ran, I think, the fastest race of the year yeah. in the Honorable Miss. But the fractions in that race for a closer like Mary Quite Contrary she was just. supposed to at least pass a couple, pass a little bit or make up some ground. She couldn't do either. So we're going to find out today if it was a Saratoga thing or where's the form today. Yeah, and, and Safi's got two other runners, and here you've yep. got three witches in the mix. I do as well. Uh, proven at this distance, and that's – less than than Bluefield can yeah. say or uh, that the Rosie's Halo can say. Well, Rosie's Halo has one win on it, but still. Yeah, and it's, I'm dead set against our Adios jersey today. Yeah, and you were on her last time, yeah. so you, you know where mm -hmm. we'll find her. She'll be in the front uh -huh. early, and uh, good to see uh, Georgina Baxter having that uh, horse in very good form. Now, the finale today, hopefully you're still alive in the Rainbow Six, late pick four, late pick five yep. at this point. A maiden $16,000 level, five and a half furlongs on the Tapita. No scratches in this spot, and the seven church girl. You said you're a long shot today. Yeah, okay. this is my long shot. Um, this is an extremely weak group, even for this level. Yes. There's a lot of horses that you'd, you'd have no idea what you're going to get from them. Listen, Church Girl's one of them, but the only time she's run on Tapita was in a maiden special way behind a escape room, who's okay. I mean, she's yeah. pretty darn good, actually. Um, so now maybe she's back to a surface she likes a little bit. There's just, you know, you're going to have a heavy favorite umbral, I would assume. Mm -hmm. um, and that's it. Who else are you supposed to be worried about? Yeah, the lack of speed concerns me, but Hector mm -hmm. Diaz Jr. getting aboard, he's very aggressive the with these horses, and it's good to see. Umbral on top for me. This horse faced way too tough last out and actually hit the board. And I think we were very surprised at that. This horse needs to be at this level, a daughter of Ghost Zapper. The same owner-trainer connections took the finale yesterday. Yeah, this horse is not – this horse might be 8 to 5. Yeah. Here. I don't know what the 10 to 1 is. Um, check, it's, Definitely. It's Edgar riding for, for Antonio Sano. Let's check out the stat, too. It's a good one. Uh, it's a huge one. I mean, they're they're – so solid together, and here they are. This is, you know, uh, on Tapita, the 24%. This horse ran against winners last time. Right. We're running against $16,000 maiden claimers today. Yeah. Um, you know, th th a lot of people are going to single this horse uh, at the end of all of their, their tickets, I think, because um, she's in a mighty good spot. Today. She is, and she showed some will last out, which is always good to see. Uh, it's a strong card today. We're happy to have you with us, uh, whether you're watching at home or you're watching here live, come out and say hi. We've got uh, 
world-renowned lightning round uh, coming <laughs> up for you before we send it on up to Pete Aiello with the scratches on the card. He doesn't have to do too much, so we won't leave him with too much time. But uh, uh, kicking things off, mandatory. Yeah, mandatory. So we'll go race 5 to 10 today. The pool's still going to be very, very solid. Yeah. Obviously, whoever hit it yesterday, well done on a very, very difficult sequence. Uh, but the pool, we pay it out today, and these are the types of days, you know, when it's not in the millions of dollars range. You know, you get a couple prices, you got a chance. We'll still have a very solid pool today, and mm. we're excited about that. Yep, huge pool. Make sure to get involved. We'll post our tickets. Uh, your best bet today? Yeah, it's last leave. She's up in uh, Lexington today. So all right. Is she out. your best bet there? No, I don't like her, and that's okay. not at all. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I've got a Grand Soiree uh, in the second race uh, Five to one on the line, long yep. shot. Long shot is about uh, 517 in the PM. Church girl in the finale, race number 10. All right, and mine is in about 24 minutes uh, with Decisive Warrior here. Eight to one. I like it. And uh, again, Princess Rooney Day. Yeah, we're, this is a, a big day. We're excited. It's a graded stakes race. It's a win and you're in for the Breeders' Cup, uh, the Philly and Mare Sprint. So uh, it's kind of cool. And here's Mary Quite Contrary. We didn't show this. Uh, during the race, but this is her winning the grade two inside information, and, and she is the definition of the house horse, and Luca Panici has done such a good job yeah. on her. Talk to him. We'll show that a little bit later on, and uh, she's going to get her splits today to rally into, and that's what she does, six for seven on our main track, so it's cool to see her. There's a big... Um, Speaking of win and you're in, there's a big Breeders' Cup win and you're in pick five today with our sister track, Santa Anita, mm -hmm. in Keeneland. So that's uh, coming up later on as, as well. Great racing across the country and great racing right here outside behind us. Yeah, we're happy to have you with us. Enjoy the day. Huge day. Looking forward to that first weekend in November at Santa Anita, our sister track. We're going to send it on up to Pete Aiello with the scratches and changes. Brian and I will be without you throughout the day. Enjoy the day here on Princess Rooney win and you're in Breeders' Cup Day.